Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Steam Train. I hope you guys are all doing well, and you may notice that things look a little bit different today. That's because today we are doing our cardboard challenge. It's something I'm super excited about, but let's go over a few things in case you don't know what the cardboard challenge is. The cardboard challenge is super awesome, and I left a comment down below with the link included. But if you go to newminds.tv slash earthday2020, you're going to see all of our awesome resources and videos and places to share your projects, as well as just see the challenge and how it's going along. The cardboard challenge has three categories. The first one is building an arcade, some sort of game like a claw machine, pinball, completely out of cardboard and recycled materials. The second challenge is building a future city. The third challenge is the ABC challenge where you can build anything your heart or mind can come up with. It's super awesome, so I'm going to be doing an hour-long episode today of me just doing the challenge myself. I had an idea in the back of my head. I know I want to use a ball for my machine, but other than that, I have planned mine out at all, not yet. I'll go over the supplies I have, but I want to see what you guys make. So feel free to check out newminds.tv slash earthday2020 for all of the awesome details. The next lesson later today, I'm going to be doing another hour-long episode doing the Future City Challenge. So if that's what you want to see, don't worry. That's coming up later today. Without further ado, let's go over my supplies, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So first, I have scissors, as always. I have tape. I'm actually going to be using some paper clips for mine. I have a golf ball. I had a golf ball, it fell. I have some paper to plan out on. I've got things to write with and glue sticks and a ruler. I also have, these are special materials I'm using for today. Make sure you get parents permission before you use them. I have a box cutter and an X-Acto knife. I'll try not to use these, so if you do something similar, you can follow along without using these specialized tools. But I am going to use them today. I'm actually not using any hot glue. That's a challenge I gave myself, is for this arcade challenge, I'm not going to use any hot glue at all. Over here, I also have a tape roll. And it's time on to the good stuff, the cardboard supplies. I have about 15 toilet paper rolls. I have a cheese crackers box. I have the bottom half of this bottle we use for a bobo project. I might reuse it today. I have an empty egg carton that's been cleaned out. And I have a bunch of cardboard square sheets that come with records whenever I buy them. So I have a bunch of them left over. And this big box back here. So with all these supplies, I'm going to go ahead and come back on camera. I'm going to be working on this table here. I'm actually going to move back so you can see it better. And I'm going to start planning out my challenge. So the idea I had was I wanted to make some sort of ball game that you get different amounts of points for. I might try and make a ski ball depending on how making a ramp goes, but I know I want to use this long box for my alleyway. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to cut off these flaps because I know I won't need them on the side. So I'm just going to start cutting. I'm going to do this with scissors. Put my ball over so it doesn't roll away. Now I'm going to go ahead and start cutting. Now I don't have a perfect idea in my head yet. I'm not even sure how this is going to go. But I have the courage to try. So I'm just going to do my best. It might turn out better than I'd hoped. It might turn out worse. But it will finish. That's the important part is finishing your project. I want to see what you guys make. It may not be exactly what's in your head. It might turn out even better. So just make sure you keep working on it and finish whatever you're making. Even if it's not the best idea, a finished one is better than no idea at all. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out. I'm going to have to do this on both sides, so it is going to take a little bit, but I think it's going to be worth it. Almost there. I'm going to start from the other side now. Make sure you're always careful when cutting through cardboard. You can't see through it, and you don't know where your hand is on the other side, so make sure your hand is far away from the blade of the scissors. And I'm just going to start cutting it. There. 
There we go. So I got one side off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these two walls as the kind of the borders so my ball doesn't fall out. So I'm actually going to cut off this other side. I'm going to leave this back flap, and I might cut this bottom part over here open so it could be kind of like a roll-in ramp. So cut off the other side. Just like the other one, I got halfway through. I'm gonna flip around because it's a little easier for me to cut this way because I'm right-handed. So there's less stuff getting my right hand. Through. As you guys are working, I'm excited to see what cardboard challenges you guys come up with. When we've done this in person, we've had a bunch of kids doing it at the same time all in the same room and everyone has had a completely unique and different idea. So I can't wait to see how you guys make it your own. And you change the ideas, make them unique and yours. You may have a similar start to mine, but yours might have a completely different finish that changes the game altogether. And almost there, there we go. So I have my two sides off of my box and I think I have the start to my project. I'm gonna set this up here. So what's going to happen is my ball is going to roll and I want it to go up some sort of ramp. I'm going to try and make it a jump at first because I think that would look cooler, but it might change depending on how it goes. I'm actually going to cut this side open so when I set this on the floor I have like a rolling ramp. And I'm going to be working on this for the full hour so you're going to get an extra amount of steam train today. More than you've ever had before. And actually, this part isn't attached except by tape, so I'm just going to cut it off. I'm just going to cut the tape. And now I have this long kind of runway, and I think this is going to be a good start to my game. Now, I think I want to go extra fancy and have some sort of way that the ball comes back when you miss. So I need to have some sort of support so the whole thing is slanted. Because if it's slanted, the ball will roll back down. So I'm going to add some sort of support beam on the back. So that way it can come back down the machine. Let me think of how I want to do this. Okay, I have an idea. Since I'm not using any glue for this, that's my extra challenge I gave myself, I, I have an idea on how to make this raised. I'm going to cut two strips of cardboard that are the same size. So I'm going to have to fold it. See where the, Actually, I'm just going to measure it and see where the middle is. It's five inches, so at two and a half, which is that line. So I'm going to cut it. So the reason I cut two equal strips that are kind of long is because I actually, actually turned this into a foot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go halfway through each one. So since they're two and a half inches, I'm going to cut one and a quarter, which is about there. Cut it a little bit wider. And cut it up. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. The exact same thing. So cut a, cut a rectangle out, this little cardboard width. Cut this piece off. And now I have two pieces that are the same, but they actually, when you turn them, they interlock together and they make a joint. I'm gonna put tape on the corners, so that way this joint is more stable. And I think that's what I'm gonna use to lift up my cardboard machine. 
that way it has a ball return. Because if you had to run all the way to the back of the skee-ball machine every time you threw a ball, that would be a really slow and not very fun game. So the whole thing being slanted helps the ball come back smoothly. There we go. more. This joint is just going to help keep it together. That's why I'm putting all this tape on it. Here we go. Now I have this X joint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this onto the bottom. And when I set it down, it's slanted. So I'm going to test it. Let me find where my ball went. I'm going to set it. And it does actually roll all the way back down. I'll turn it in a different way where you can see it later. But for now, this actually goes on and it rolls all the way down. I'm just going to set this aside. I'm not actually going to tape this on yet. And I'm going to set this down for later. I guess the next piece I need is when it rolls down, it's going to need a way to come back without actually going in the way of the course. So I'm going to make kind of a little lane divider. I'm going to make it get wider at the end. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a thin line that's ball width for it to go back up and then I'm going to add a slanted part so that when it goes up the ramp, it goes down the slant and it looks pretty nice. So I think how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to cut one really long thin strip out of these thin pieces. Because they're about the same length as the box, they're going to work really well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut off a really long thin strip out of my cardboard. Just enough so that way I can attach it onto the side. I'm actually going to use the other edge because it was flat already, so I think it's going to work a little bit better. I'm going to try and keep it in a straight line. If it's not perfectly straight, it doesn't matter because I do have this flat side that's already straight. And that's another tip. If you're using a straight line, find an edge of the box that's already going to be flat. And use that end. It'll be way more straight than you can cut it or I can cut it. This is kind of like getting really far. It's peeling like a banana. So it's kind of going up my face as I cut it. But I'm almost there. I'm getting close to the other side. Now I have this long, thin piece. And I know I want it to line up with the end, and I want it to kind of bend at a certain point, and then go into the wall. So that's actually what I'm going to use my paper clips for. Because I'm not using glue, I'm going to use paper clips to stick things through. The side of the cardboard has holes, so I'm actually going to stick these paper clips through the holes and then through the bottom of my contraption. That's going to make it so everything stays in place and is held down just by using a paper clip. It uses less glue and it's quicker and easier to do. Just make sure you're careful when you poke it, you don't poke through and poke your hand. And I'm actually going to use quite a few of these just so that way it stays down because it's going to get hit by the ball a couple times, so it's going to use some force. Now the reason I'm doing this first instead of the actual machine is because I'm working from the bottom to the top because it's going to be work hard to work on the bottom after you've already put the top on. So I make sure to work on the lowest pieces first in my game and then work my way up. So the ball return, even though it's not the most exciting part, it is the first part I'm going to do. These are a little tough to poke through, but I think I'm going to keep working on it. I'm just going to get through eventually. There we go. I got my first one in. And this way, I can lift them up anytime I need to and set them back down because the paper clips will stay in place and then they'll just fall through the hole. I'm going to put about five or six on here. I'm going to make sure to lift it up when I do it so they go all the way through and make sure my hand is not in the way of where the paper clip's going so I don't poke myself. And 
something important to do as you're making it is to always keep testing it. The more you test it, the better it's going to work. You'll figure out where the problems are early rather than later. Once I put this paper clip in, I'm going to test this part out. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I have this slant. I'm actually going to make it have a sharp bend in it. Well, let's go ahead and set it down. I'm going to set it on my little support. Where did it go? It's behind me. I'm going to set it on my little support. I already found a problem is that my paper clips need to be folded under so that way they stay on. When I lift it up, they actually lift up because they're poking the ground. So now when I set this ball, it rolls down. It actually goes to one spot like a ball return. And I realized it just kind of flies off, so I'm going to put a stopper at the end of my ball return. So right now, this is what I have. I'm going to make it a sharp bend, so I'm going to put in a bunch more paper clips and make it stick, and I think I'm going to add my ramp right around here. So I start to have my game. Next thing I need to do, all I'm doing is straightening out a paper clip, and then I poke it through one of these holes in the cardboard, and then it goes through all the way through like a skewer. And then once it's skewered in, then I just fold it under, and it actually stays in place pretty well. Now, if I don't finish this project before the hour is up, that's okay. I'll post a picture of it afterward. I'll speed through it. I'll try and finish it within the hour because I want you guys to be able to see how this turns out live. But I actually don't have that much left to do. Once I stick the ball return, which is actually probably the hardest part, I just need to make a ramp and then somewhere for the balls to go. I think I need about three more paper clips. This is probably the hardest step I'm going to do. But as you can see, it's starting to take shape. It does have the bend in it now because I put one in this corner. So I'm going to put two more over here just so this stays down. And we'll have a working ball return on our cardboard arcade, which I'm pretty excited about. All I'm doing is using paper clips to attach things instead of using hot glue because I know not everyone has access to hot glue. But paper clips, almost everybody should have at least a few. As always with all of our steam train lessons, make sure you ask what supply you can and can't use. You don't want to get yourself in trouble using the supply you're not supposed to use. And when you're using cardboard for this, don't go, go out and buy boxes for this. That defeats the point. This is about recycling, and it is on Earth Day. So make sure you reuse the paper you have, the cardboard you have. This is a car park box, and now it is being reused because I'm not needing the box anymore. As opposed to the one I went out and bought just for the cardboard challenge. This is starting to look pretty good. I think I'm going to put one more paper clip, and then I will call the ball return. Done. What kind of arcade games are you guys making? I know I'm making like an old, old school skee ball one, but you might have a unique or brand new idea that's never been seen before. I'm making an idea that's already out in the world, but maybe you have something even more awesome that you've thought of that you've never seen. We can't wait to hear about what they are, see pictures of them. And feel free to go to newminds.tv slash earthday2020. Post the pictures up there and show us what you made. A trick I found on the paper clips is I poke a hole with it first, but it's hard to get it all the way through, so I use something else like the end of my scissors to help it get all the way through, fold it under, and now I have this piece. So when a ball is gonna roll up, it's gonna land somewhere in this top area. It's gonna go down and roll back to the user. So I think that's working pretty well. So the next step is to add our ramp. So whenever I add our ramp, the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is make a ramp that is the correct size. It needs to be 
just big enough that I can roll it up this other side. So I'm gonna measure how wide this is and cut a cardboard sheet. So it looks like this part is about, let's see, it's kind of hard to fit my ruler in here. Let's get a little creative. Looks like it's about eight inches. So I'm gonna find this cardboard. I think this one is already eight inches. It's seven and a half, so it's a little too short. So I'm gonna find the bigger piece. This is a leftover piece I used from a different steam chain project. Always try and use torn apart cardboard first instead of brand new cardboard because it's easier to find a lot of uses for brand new cardboard. If you have a torn apart piece you can use, use that first because you're going to have less chances to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it at about eight inches. That's right on this line. The cool thing about cardboard is you don't have to draw lines across it most of the time because there's already lines in the cardboard, especially if you're cutting with the corrugation. And now I have a start to my ramp. So it is very long. But I think this is a good start to it. I'm gonna go ahead and test it, how it works. Make sure the balls can roll up there without bumping or anything. And if they do bump, I'm gonna have to make a change. They can actually slide up it pretty well. So that is where I'm going to start. Now what I'm gonna need for the back part is I'm gonna need a big sheet with holes in it. And it's gonna have holes in it so the ball can fall through your different points and then roll back down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it cover the whole thing so that way it has to land in at least one of the holes. When it lands in, then it's gonna fall into a certain hole and it's gonna roll back down the ball return. Because it's slanted, even if it goes too high, it'll just roll back down. I think that's how I'm gonna handle it. So first thing I need to do is secure this ramp in place. And I think I'm just gonna use the paperclip trick, but I'm gonna put it on the ends first. So that way, if the ball goes in the middle, it won't actually bump off the paperclips and mess something up. Oops, I accidentally crushed my support. I need to move that out of the way before I do this step. So I'm gonna go ahead, poke this all the way through. Put my paper clip in. Make it nice and secure. Fold the paper clip over on the top and bottom. So that way it's stuck on both sides. And I'll show you this in a second. There we go. So I have this little, let's get moved a little closer so you can see it. I have this little metal paper clip that's holding it down. So I'm just gonna fold it on the bottom and on the top. So that way this ramp stays in place. And then I'm gonna put it on the other side also. And I might actually stick one through the side of this ramp and through the wall, just so it has a height that it stays at too. Something I did, but I forgot to mention, was that I made the ball return wall taller than the ball. So that way if I decide to cover this up, the ball won't get stuck. So I have one half of the ramp secured in place. I'm gonna get the other half now. And I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. Same old, same old, poke a hole, put the paper clip in. And then there we will have it. We'll have a working ramp for our very own ski ball machine. Now, if you're brand new to working with NARP cardboard, that's perfectly okay. Check out newminds.tv slash earthday2020. We have all these awesome resources that Mr. T put together for us to help you learn how to work with cardboard and get a little better at it. Because remember, we're all about improving your skills here. It's not about starting out perfect. It's about learning and getting better. As we always say, you keep practicing your passions until they become your talents. Don't just practice the things you're talented at.
go. I'm fixing the first side. It actually was too close to the edge, so it popped out. But now it's all the way in. I'm gonna put my support back under here. And I'm gonna do a test roll. And that actually works really well. I roll it up the ramp and the ball comes back. I'll turn it in a way so you guys can see it. I'll put it back here. So I'm gonna roll it up the ramp and the ball's actually gonna come all the way back down. And I don't see any problems with it yet. So a couple tests just to make sure. And let's try one really slow roll. It comes right back down the ramp. One fast roll. Looks pretty good. So I think this is, we're actually really close to getting through this project. I noticed the ramp stayed at the same height, but I'm gonna put the support in anyway, just to be safe. Because I don't think I could be too safe with this, so I just want to make it look nice. I'm gonna put the hole where the ramp lines up. And then I'm gonna put my paper clip through the hole and then through the side of the ramp. Let's get the clip through the hole first. You can see it on the other side. Make sure it goes through the ramp. And I'm actually just going to straighten this so it goes really far through the ramp. And there we have it. I have this little secure paper clip. And I have this ramp. And this is actually looking really smooth so far. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The next thing I need is I'm going to add in our score point, our score system. First thing I need to do is make sure it's the size to cover the whole thing. I don't want it to fall and not get any points. And this is actually pretty close to the right size. I'm just going to have to trim it down a little bit so it fits. I'm going to make sure it goes under the ramp so that it doesn't roll back down the ramp and accidentally hurt somebody. And then I'm going to put the holes in it. And I'm going to support it with toilet paper tubes that are taller than the ball. So I'm gonna cut a few. I know the ball is an inch and a half. So I'm gonna cut these two inches just so it has plenty of room. So I measure two inches on this toilet tube. Then I'm going to cut it. And once I cut the first one, I can actually use it to measure the other ones. They're all the same size. As long as it's bigger than the ball, and they're all the same size, this will work really well. I'm gonna cut four of them, just so I have a lot of supports. So I'm gonna measure it with the first one. And this actually only takes two tubes, because the tubes are pretty long, so I can get two out of each one. There we go. And the last one. And it's easier to cut tubes if you fold them flat. And now I have my awesome four tubes. I'm gonna cut this to be a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make sure that it does actually fit in here. I don't want it to be too big. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually line it up. I'm just gonna mark a line around the edges that are too big. I'm just gonna mark the line that's too big because cardboard has lines on it so it makes it easier for you to cut. And I'm just gonna start cutting. This is on the edge, so I'm gonna make sure my fingers are nowhere near my scissor blades. Because we're trying to cut cardboard, not our hands. So I'm just gonna cut this little strip off. And make sure it fits in side to side. And it does fit in side to side. I'm gonna need to make some changes towards the top because it is a little too wide at the top because the box kind of closes in. So I'm just gonna cut those off. I'm just gonna cut little triangles. It can't hurt because the triangles aren't big enough for the ball to fall in. And the whole thing's going to be slanted, so it's going to fall in and it'll be a-okay. So that's perfect. We have our scoring thing in, but we need it to be short enough that it goes under the rim. So I'm going to mark another line. I'm actually going to see if I can slide this under the rim right now. Ooh, I can slide it under the rim. So I think this is going to work pretty well. Because it's going to balance on top of the ball return we used earlier and it's going to fit under the ramp so it'll actually come back so i roll it up where's my support i need to make sure to do some tests find anywhere where i see a problem so this 
up, I did find an issue. It's getting stuck on the top of the ramp. So I'm gonna have to add another slant like we did at the bottom at the top of the ramp. So if it doesn't go high enough, it does actually come back down. But I think I can fix this problem by cutting out a ramp size shape and then making this platform the same height as the ramp. So I think I'm actually gonna do that because I think it will make my project just a little bit better. But if you have a different solution, that is totally up to you. So I'm gonna make this whole ramp size. It's one part. There's another part. Thank you for the nice comments, Dee. I'm glad you're enjoying my project. I can't wait to see what all the other people make. But now I have this cardboard piece that lines up really well with the ramp. So it's almost like a smooth platform. Now there's two ways I could attach this. I think one way is using the same trick as before with the paper clip sticking it through the wall. I think that's actually what I'm gonna do. But before I attach it, I need to cut out of this because it's gonna be hard to cut out of later. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna mark my holes where I want my score. So when I think about the easier parts to hit are probably gonna be at the bottom if I just roll it. The harder parts are gonna be at the top where I have to jump. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And I know that this side's the top and this side is the bottom. So I wanna have all my big points up at the top and I want them to be smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trace it on the back side so that way my marks don't show and I can make the front side look more decorated. So I'm tracing on the back and I'm gonna remember that everything's gonna be backwards. I'm gonna put my big score. I'm just gonna set my ball down and I'm gonna trace a little bit around it. I don't want it to be perfectly ball sized because it might get stuck, but I do wanna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna draw a circle and then I'm gonna draw a bigger circle around it so I know where to cut out. So I kind of have something like this. The first circle is the ball. The second one is the bigger circle that I'm sure it will fit through. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make this one much larger. So I'm just gonna set the ball, do a much larger circle. Then I'm gonna do another big one over here. As long as I know they're bigger than the ball, then I should be okay. And just for fun, I'm gonna do one on this bottom piece. Make sure it's bigger than the ball. So I have all of my marks for my holes. They're on the back side, so when I set it, you don't see the marks hit. I'm gonna cut the holes out, I'm gonna label them to make them look nice, so that's why I did it on the back side. So now I'm gonna use, this is gonna be a little hard to do with scissors, but I'm gonna make my first mark with my box cutter and then I'll do the rest with scissors, just so you guys can see. If you have parents helping you, they can definitely help you with this part with the box cutter, or they can just cut the first hole, just like that, and then you can do the rest with scissors. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut my holes out. And this project is gonna take a while, that's why it's a 24 hour cardboard challenge. And if this is your first time doing it, or you just wanna show us what you're making, Use the hashtag, hashtag 24 Earth Day Challenge, and all of your cardboard challenge needs will be posted there by people all around the globe seeing awesome things that this challenge has done. I'm gonna try and cut my holes out really neat because the holes are gonna be seen because that's where my ball is gonna fall. But before I label it, I'm gonna do a test, see which holes are the easiest to hit, see which ones are the hardest to hit, and then I'm gonna secure it in place, and then I will label it. So I have my first hole. I'm going to test it out. Remember, you want to do lots and lots of testing. So this thing kind of slides in place because it uses friction to keep, keep up for now. And actually, I just had an idea. If I make the paper clips, instead of going straight through it, I make them like supports, I can lift them up and fix the machine anytime I need to. So I think I'm going to do that and it'll work a little bit better. Yeah. But of course, I'm going to do my test first. I have my hole, you guys can kind of see it. I'm gonna roll it. It does still get stuck on the ramp a little bit, 
When I fix the ramp to line up, that won't happen anymore. But let's see if I can land it in the hole. Let's try it again. There we go. It went in the hole, and it rolled all the way back down. So I'm going to cut my other holes out, and I think we'll have an awesome working game. So the first hole was a success. I'm going to make the smaller holes now. And it should look good to go. I'm just going to make the first line with the box cutter. Make sure it goes all the way through. And then I will cut the rest with scissors. You can do this with scissors, but it isn't as fast. And I want to make sure it looks really nice for you guys. If you have parent supervision, they can really help you with the box cutter in this part. Box cutters are sharp. You want to be very careful. Always cut away from me. You notice I'm never pointing it towards my body. And I put it closed when I'm not using it. going around I think this one's gonna be really I think this is gonna be the easiest hole to hit because it's the closest to the ramp so if you want to avoid this one you're gonna have to jump and I think that's gonna be a cool challenge so I have two holes now I'm gonna cut the the one that I think is gonna be the hardest and I'm gonna cut this bonus hole maybe I haven't decided if I'm at the last hole yet And if you don't have paper clips to do this, and you want to secure it the way I am, toothpicks also work pretty well. Anything that can poke through and can fit through the corrugation of a cardboard actually works really well. And maybe you combine different elements into this. I thought about at first using this egg carton because the ball fits in it, and then just coloring all the different egg cartons different colors so the ball will go up the ramp and land in an egg carton hole. Maybe that's an idea you have for your game. But I decided to make a cardboard one fully cardboard so that's what i did there's different ways to do it it's all up to you this is your cardboard challenge so i have my first three holes i'm gonna cut this bottom hole and then i will be good to go and this hole is basically just so that way it doesn't fly back down the ball return from the top and you get zero points we'll also make sure you at least get some points I think I'm going to make this hole more square, actually, just because it's the extra hole. Cut the other side. There we go. So I have my holes now. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can secure this in place, make it sit nice and solid, make sure it doesn't fall. And if I need to, I'm actually going to use these as supports, but they are going to be much higher now because I changed my design. It's okay if you have a change in your design halfway through. If it makes it better, then go with it. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. I know mine definitely isn't. And I think how I want to approach this is I want to connect this to the ramp first. And once I connect it to the ramp, then I'm going to stick it through the sides. Because the, the ramp lining up is the important part. Because otherwise the ball will get stuck. So I'm going to do what the part I think is the most important first. And then go from there. This is turning out really well. I'm kind of happy with how it worked out. So I've got the paper clip in the ramp. You can see this little metal pole. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it through this sheet right here. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm actually going to take it off. I think I'll do three and stick them all in at the same time. I think I'm going to finish this faster than I thought. I thought it would take me more than the hour, but I'm working pretty quick and I think it's going pretty well. It's not about how fast you finish, it's about putting your ideas and making them finished. If you have a really complicated idea, it's going to take you a while. If you have a simple idea, simple idea, it might not take you as long. but Finishing the ideas is the cool part. I just want to see what you finish. I'm gonna put this. Paper, I'm gonna bend it a little bit so I can stick it through the bottom. The paper clip stays in place. There we go. That one's in. 
And now I just need the third one. I'm gonna stick the platform on, attach it at the sides, and then label my points. And my machine will actually be done. It'll have a working ball return. I think it'll look pretty cool. And then of course I have to test it, play it, and see how many points I can get. If you guys are just now joining us, we're doing the cardboard challenge. This is a special hour long episode. If you don't know about the cardboard challenge, go to newminds.tv slash earthday2020. It'll tell you all the details there, but I'm doing the, car the arcade challenge this morning. So I'm making a working arcade game out of cardboard. And now that I have this on, I'm gonna stick the paper clips in these holes. And now I have this smooth lined up piece. And actually the part of the paper clip went through this hole. So I'm just gonna bend that down so it's not in the way. And there we go. My ramp is attached. Now I'm just gonna attach it to the sides of the box so it's extra secure. And I should actually be pretty close to finished. I'm gonna use my knife, push it down a little so I can go where it used to be, poke a hole, put the paper clip through the hole. And remember, if you're not confident about any part or you need some help, ask the people around you, your family, your parents, anyone who's taking care of you, they'll probably be able to help. I'm gonna do two on each side, just so that way it's not like a table. It's gonna be balanced on all parts. And all sides are gonna have paperclip support. Because I want my machine to last for a while. I don't want it to work one time and fall apart. And I think this is gonna work out pretty well. So I had all of these cardboard pieces that I had saved up. I didn't end up using all of them. Maybe you want to expand your challenge. You don't just want one game. You want to make a whole arcade. That's perfectly fine. This is just to give you ideas on how to change things. So this is looking pretty good so far. We have our ball return. We have our ramp. We have four different scoring holes. And I think this is going to work really well. I'm going to secure the other side. I'm going to test it. We're going to do some math to figure out how many points I should make on each one. And then we'll go from there. And I'm glad you guys are getting inspiration from this. That's the whole idea, is all the inspirators are going to be working on their own versions of the Cardboard Challenge today. Everyone's going to do it differently. This is just how I wanted to do mine. Put the hole through there. Put my paper clip in. Kind of hard to see it on that side. I'm going to turn it. There we go. And now I just need two more holes and I will have a fully secured one, I hope. I'm gonna test it a couple times just to make sure. And then I'm gonna do some math to figure out how I should score my game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some tests, figure out which holes I get the most, make those the least points, and the holes I get the least, make those the most points. Because you want the harder to hit holes to be more points. You want it the hard to get a high score. Poking two more holes, putting paper clips in the back. And the last thing I'm gonna do is make sure there's nowhere my ball can get stuck. I don't want it to fall on the machine and get stuck because then it's not a fair game. And I need one more paper clip. I'm so excited to have this finished. I've been excited to do this challenge all week. Now I finally get to do it. And it turned out really well. I, of course, miss doing the cardboard challenge in person because kids have awesome ideas. But I'd love to see what you make and share it with us. So I have this machine. I'm going to do a couple tests. I'm going to put it back here so you can see me do the test and make sure nothing on it breaks. I need my little support so it slants. Because it's slanted, it has an inclined plane. If you remember a simple machine lesson, the inclined plane is gonna help it roll all the way back. So I'm gonna give it four tests. Test one, goes up, comes down. Test two, goes up, comes down. I'm gonna see if I can hit the back hole. 
Ooh, not quite. And test four. Goes up. Comes back down. I think that works pretty well. I didn't see any problems. It always came back pretty fast. It didn't get stuck anywhere. So now I think it's time for me to figure out which holes should be the most points and which ones should be the least points. When I did my test, the only two holes I actually went in were this hole and this hole. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do 10 tests. I'm going to label the holes 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to see which one I get the most in four, in four tests and which one I get the least. So I'm not going to use a whole piece of paper. We're trying to not be wasteful. So I'm just going to grab a scrap construction paper from our scrap bucket and start working on it. So I'm going to label one, two, three, four. I'm going to do some tests because I am a scientist. We need to do scientific tests and see how many. I'm going to try just aiming blindly. I'm going to kind of close my eyes. I'm going to throw it and then open it to see which hole it goes in. So one goes in hole three. It's a tally for hole three. Test two. Ooh, I went in hole one. It's a tally for hole one. That's three. That's another one for hole three. Test four. I went in hole two. I like that my ball comes all the way back. I'm glad I added that in first. Hole four. Ooh, in test four, I went in hole one. It's actually test five. Test six. No hole. So I'm going to say that doesn't count because it fell off the ramp. Six. Ooh, I went in hole one again. Test seven. I went in hole one again. I thought that would be harder to hit. Test eight. I went all the way in that hole. Test nine. There you go. Test ten. I went in the top hole again. Test eleven. Test twelve. Hole two. Test thirteen. Hole two. Test fourteen. Hole two. So I have the results of my test. Whenever I did it, I did 15 tests. It went in a hole one five times. It went in a hole two five times. It went in a hole three five times. And it went in a hole four zero times. So this is definitely going to be the most points. I think I'm going to make this one the least points because it's right next to the rip. It's on the easy to hit side. So I'm going to make this one five points. So I'm going to put a big five above it. I'm going to kind of do some like lines on it to make the hole look cooler. I'm going to decorate all these holes. I'm just going to use a marker for this. I'm going to write five right above it. I'm going to make this one 10 points because it's really big. And I, this is the one I hit first and last. So I think this is going to be the one that's going to be 10 points. Yep, so I'm gonna make it 10. I'm gonna make this one have like triangles around it. I think they'll look pretty cool. This one almost looks like the sun. So it's gonna be 10 points. Now this one is on the easy to hit side and it landed in as much times as this one. So I think I'm gonna make this one also 10 points. I'm gonna make this one just have a circle around it. I'm going to make this one also 10 points. And then this one is super hard to hit. So I'm going to put little lines in the corners. I thought this would be like if you missed all the holes, they fall in here. But it turned out not to be that way. So I'm going to make this one 20 points. So now I have a game, and I need to decide the rules for my game. I know how many points you get, but I need to decide how many throws you have and what the highest score you can get is. 
Let's say you land all five in the 20. I think 100 would be a cool number to be the highest score possible. So you get five throws, because five times 20 is 100. So if I get 100 points, I did a really good game. If I get 10 every time, that's halfway there, I get 50. So I think that's going to be the next score down is getting over 50. And if I hit the 5 every time, I'm going to get 25. So I think those are going to be my three markers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a scoreboard because I have this little top piece. I'm going to make three prizes. I'm going to make prize. the big prize is if you get 100 points. 100 points. And then the next score, I'm going to make 50 points, so you have to get 10 every time. And my last score is the, you played the game, actually I want to make it so you get at least one 10, so I'm actually going to make it 30 points, so you can get four fives and one 10, so 30 points. And then you get the lowest prize. And I think I need to give my game a name. So this is the steam train. So I'm going to call it Steam Ball. And I think now I have an awesome working game. Now, if I want to get extra fancy, I can attach a sheet of paper that goes to the side where you write down your scores and the highest you've ever gotten. I think that's something I'm going to do, and I'm going to challenge my family to see who gets the highest score. But I have my finished machine. So let's review how we did this, and I actually am pretty happy I finished it in an hour. I'm going to come really close. So what we did was the first thing we did was we made the bottom piece first, this big ball return. We knew we wanted it to slant because we want the ball to always roll down. I made it a triangle, so that way it would go down a ramp, but it's always still going towards the bottom. And then I have a thin line so the ball doesn't go back into the lane, and our lane doesn't go into the ball return on accident. Next we did the ramp. We made it the same width as this small part. We made it go up and we secured it to the side so that way when I push on it, it doesn't fall down. Then I made a platform that's the same shape as this big hole, and I even made a little extra bit right here. And then I cut out different holes from the back so that way they look really nice. I added in all my different points. And then the final thing I did was I tested my points to figure out which ones were easier to get, which ones are harder to get. Once I tested out all of my different points, then I decided my high scores, what you needed, you needed 100, 50, 30 for the different prizes. So you have to get 110, a 50, and then 100. And of course, the last thing I need to do is test it. What I'm going to do is go ahead, test this out, see how it turns up. But Mr. T showed us an awesome idea. Now, I only have a minute left before we run out of time, so I'm not going to add into it. But what we could do is we can go ahead and actually put our score on a spinning wheel so we can change the score as we do it and make some sort of scorekeeper. So another thing you can do is actually add in different things to keep your score, and it would be super awesome. Like numbers you flip, like at the gas station, a wheel that spins. But that's actually my timer right now, so perfect timing for us to end the steam train today. Thank you guys for tuning in to another Real Inspired Learning with New Minds. I hope you guys have fun with the cardboard challenge, and you have a super awesome time doing it. I'm really happy I made this. I'm going to go play it and challenge my family, see how high of a score they can get. And then I'm excited to see what you guys make. Keep practicing your passions until they become your talents. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful rest of Earth Day.